In this problem, we have a spherical uh, metal sphere here with a total charge of Q and a radius of R, capital R, and our goal is to find the um, electrostatic force between the northern and southern hemisphere. So if we break up the sphere into something like we have here, of course not actually separating the two, but if we have uh, the northern hemisphere up here and the southern hemisphere, uh, as we know that each uh, um, minuscule part of the surface charge right here, uh, it does exert a radial um, electric field here. And when we have another positive charges or DQ positive charges situated around, um, these two will repel each other. And so uh, there's going to be some amount of force between these two southern, uh, northern and some southern hemispheres um, after we put them together like that so um, since this is the uh, section that deals with electrostatic pressure between uh, surface charges we'll go ahead and start with our, um, our our definition for the electric field between that's like right on the uh, uh, on the cusp of the threshold between the um, uh, two of the surface of it so we have E out and then E in being just on the outside of the uh, surface. Whoops, just on the outside of the surface and just on the inside of the surface right here. So we just take the average of that. And if you're a little bit confused, I recommend you go back into the textbook and just review that section. But this is something we're working with. And then the reason why we're going after the electric field is uh, since we're trying to find the force between the northern and summer southern hemisphere we know that force uh, stems from the the uh, uh the interaction between a a charge and the electric field emitted from a different charge here so in order to find the force we first have to find the electric field and that's what we're doing first so we'll go ahead and uh, input our what we know here so e out as we know, as uh, just radially outward from the surface of the sphere right here. But then um, E in is going to be zero on the inside. There does exist an electric field, but because they are equal and opposite, they all cancel out to zero. So the total electric field on the inside is equal to zero. We'll go ahead and continue writing that over here. So that is the electric field for a, um, a spherical shell here of radius R, and we have two. All right, and then we can, of course, simplify this down a little bit more to one over eight pi epsilon naught Q over R squared. There we go. And so now, uh, since we have the electric field, we can find the force between those. So. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start with um, just uh, a minuscule force, right? Because we know that for every point on, um, let's say, on the surface of the spherical charge right here, and then there's going to be some sort of electric field that permeates from the southern hemisphere that affects the northern hemisphere that causes some force. But then this is going to exert some electric field here. And then on this, that same um, DQ portion right here is going to push it in that direction. And then we're just going to integrate it all over the surface here. And then we're going to have all of the uh, electric field uh, force that's caused by that and just integrate them all. And so we're going to start over here with just a DF. And as we know, DF is equal to the electric field. And we just calculated it to be D average times DQ. Right, so a force it only exists from the interaction between a charge and the electric field. And then for us, this charge here, we can uh, re rewrite this charge in terms of the surface charge density and some um, dA, some small amount of uh, uh, surface area that we have here. And so we'll just go ahead and make our substitution for our E average, which we had right here. So 1 over 8 pi epsilon naught uh, Q over R squared. And now we can go ahead and uh, input in our surface charge density, which is, of course, just Q divided over the entire surface of our sphere, pi R squared here. Oh, you know what I forgot? I'm sorry. Uh, this is actually in the R hat direction. 
gonna have the uh, direction, of course. So make sure you put that in there because I, I had vectors all here. And so that means we need a vector here. There we go. And moving forward, we have our DA, which I'll just put in generic terms right here. And uh, of course our DA, since we're gonna be integrating over um, a, over the, the semi-sphere, we're, we're gonna be uh, taking the, we'll just say with northern sphere right now, uh, we're just gonna be integrating the force contributed uh, acting, we're going to be integrating the force that's happening on the norm, some DQ on the northern hemisphere, but being caused by all of the uh, surface charge here on the southern hemisphere. So it's going to be pointing here, 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 just like I said, and um, uh, going in uh, um, spherical coordinates, we'll just go ahead and turn this DA into our spherical coordinate analogy, which is r squared sine theta d theta d phi. Right, and I'll go ahead and make one big leap here down. So we know from symmetry that, let's say we have um, some sort of charge up here, right? The electric field that, or the force that's caused by this small dq that acts on this dq is gonna be pointing in this direction, right? It's gonna have some magnitude because it's like relatively close right here. But then if we look at that same charge and then we look at the one, uh, the force that's being caused by dq way over here, it's gonna be pointing in this direction, but it's gonna be a little bit less. And then if we integrate over all this, we know that there's gonna be one pointing over here, one pointing over here, one pointing up. And then once we add them all together by symmetry, we're probably gonna have a net force equal to up because these are both um, symmetrical to each other. So the net force is going to be in this direction, in this direction. And in spherical or, or in our in terms of our, our coordinate axes, if we have a coordinate axis here, uh, we just denote this as the z direction right here. We know that the net force is going to be in the z direction by symmetry right here. So we'll go ahead and change looking over here. Just take the z component right here. And uh, of course, um, if we look at the z component, right, if we take a, if this is our theta right here, and we have some vector, here we go, we have some vector being caused right here, and this is our z component right here, and this is our theta, in order to get the z component, we'll just take the cosine of theta right here, cosine of theta times our, uh, our, our vector right here gives us the z component. So all we have to do is just multiply all this by cosine theta and we'll get the z component. So let me go ahead and just rewrite everything in terms of the z component, but just take this opportunity to go ahead and consolidate everything down. So we'll have a eight times four, which gives us a 32. We have uh, two pi's being multiplied by each other. So we have a pi squared. Let me rewrite this in a little bit of a nicer form q squared over 32 pi squared we only have one epsilon not left over uh let's see and we have uh, r squared r squared just because uh this r squared canceled out with this r squared right here and um let's see here we have our sine all this multiply sine theta but times cosine theta to get our z component. So we'll just go ahead and put our z hat out here just for bookkeeping, then our d theta d phi. And we'll go ahead and scoot this z hat in a little closer. Okay. And now uh, we can go ahead and just integrate over our respective space, over our um, semi or hemisphere, hemisphere. We go there's our glob of constants and we'll do a double integral you know what let me just scoot everything down a little bit and just give us a little bit more room here we go make these integral signs a little bit more pretty okay so we have our sine theta cosine theta d theta d phi z hat Right, so for our theta integral, we are only gonna go, since this is the uh, a hemisphere, we're only gonna go from zero to pi over two, right? And then we're gonna sweep it around for uh, two pi, right? So our theta is just gonna be over pi over two, and then we're gonna do a full sweep over for two pi in order for us to get a full hemisphere. 
Let me go and scroll up a little bit. Uh, nothing really happens to this club of constants, so I'll just do like a, a ditto sign right there. Our first integral, uh, we'll just do the harder one first. So the integral of this in respect to theta is uh, sine squared theta. So we have in there sine squared theta over two. And that's evaluated from pi over two to zero in parentheses, and we still have our phi left over. We'll do it in the next step of the math. And I'll just go ahead and explicitly write out our, uh, our potpourri of constants that we have here. Let's see here. Um, so we can just go ahead, while the same time we do this, we can go ahead and evaluate this integral, which is pretty easy. It's just two pi. I'll just throw two pi out here. Okay, so sine squared theta over two. So we have one half, or it's just one when evaluated at uh, pi over two, and then zero when it's evaluated at zero. So we have one half over zero over two because of that one half that's uh, like hanging around right here. And then, oh, of course, there's a z hat, z hat direction. And that's Q2. And then 32 pi, since we have a pi left over here, we can cancel that this, this pi, this pi, this and this turns out to be, um, uh, let's see here, two, we can cancel out that two, so it could be uh, with, actually, nope, let's go ahead and cancel out these, these twos with that one. All right, so these correspond to these these two. And what's over is a um, Q squared over 32 pi epsilon naught one over R squared, all pointing in the Z hat direction. And that is the um, total, total force between these two uh, uh, hemispheres right here. This one pointing in the upwards directions as, as we uh, conceptually thought at the beginning of the problem.